So, this bowling ball has a lot of gravitational potential energy. The higher I lift it, the more gravitational potential energy. And of course, if I drop it, the gravitational potential energy drops. Let's see what happens. Now, you thought I was going to drop that at my foot. No. In this video, I'm going to use this teddy to demonstrate gravitational potential energy. Now, why? In an earlier video on gravitational energy, I used a cartoon image and I had many viewers liking that. So I thought I'd dig out my teddy that I grew up with in Holland when I was five years old. And so with this video, I'm going to give you a deeper understanding of gravitational potential energy with teddy. Stay tuned. So in this video, I want to give you a deeper understanding of gravitational energy, but I also want to do is review a couple of key concepts that will aid our understanding for our deeper understanding of gravitational energy. The first thing is this. You'll notice I've used gravitational energy, not gravitational potential energy. Now they're often used interchangeably. I just prefer not to use the word potential so the students don't fall into common trap. It suggests possibly that the energy is somehow stored inside the object that has the gravitational energy. It is in that case, it's actually about its position in a gravitational field. The second thing I want to talk about is the fact that we are talking about work. When we change an object's gravitational energy, we are doing work on it. So for example, if I lift him up, I am doing work on him changing his displacement because I'm applying a force on Ted. Similarly speaking, if I allow Ted to drop, his gravitational energy changes because in this case, the gravitational field is doing the work on Ted, causing its displacement. Now that we've got that out of the road, let's also have a look at the diagram here. So I have Ted and I'm going to place Ted above the snow. This is a scene in Canada near Banff. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna allow Ted to drop and he falls down. Now, most of you would appreciate the fact that he now has a change in gravitational energy. And so what we say is, is the change in gravitational energy, we use U as our symbol, is equal to basically his weight, which is our mg, multiplied by the change in his displacement, which we often write as height. So in other words, this is his height. Now, what sign is this change in gravitational energy? Most of you will probably realize that he has a drop in gravitational energy. Why? Well, he speeds up. He gains kinetic energy and conservation of energy says the total energy remains the same. And so therefore, if he gains kinetic energy as he falls to the earth, he's losing gravitational energy. So there's an important point. When we are moving towards the object with mass that has a gravitational field, we say we are decreasing or lowering the gravitational energy. If we're moving away, we have to be increasing the gravitational energy. The next point is often a thing that a number of students in the younger years do. They say, well, Teddy's dropped, he's no longer moving, and therefore his gravitational energy value at this point right there is going to be equal to zero because he's no longer moving. You have to be careful here because this U is actually just a relative term. What do I mean by that? Well, what if I suddenly did this? I open up the chasm. Now all of a sudden Teddy starts to fall again. Does that mean he had gravitational energy to begin with beforehand? Well, again, it's all a relative term. We're not interested in the actual value of the gravitational energy. We're interested in changes in gravitational energy. By all means, say that is zero, but we only say that because it makes the mathematics to work out the change nice and easy, but it doesn't mean it's actually zero at that point. And really, generally right across the board, scientists aren't interested in the value of gravitational energy. They're interested in changes in gravitational energy as an object moves within a gravitational field. All right, so now we've got that, we need to now notice that this formula, this MGH formula is limited. And why is that? Well, it's limited because, see if you can work it out, we make an assumption that the gravitational acceleration, the G value, or more correctly, the term we use gravitational field strength is a constant, but it isn't. 
Because the fact is, is that the gravitational field strength is actually determined by Newton's understanding of gravity. We know that the force in terms of Newtonian gravity is equal to G M M over R squared. That is the mass of our both objects. And of course, it depends on their displacement between them squared which means that the accelerational field strength ends up being that particular formula. And so Teddy's gravitational field strength varies as he moves away. So therefore, MGH doesn't cut it. Why? Because it's not constant. It doesn't stay the same. Does that mean our MGH formula is no longer valid? No, it isn't the case. Why? Because it's a model that's certainly valid for the small scale. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. For example, here's my field of Teddy in the, the snow here, and I can simply add my gravitational field lines, the representations of the gravitational field. I can do the same thing for the large scale here, and I can add those. Now, you'll see that the field is actually radial. It weakens as we move away. This example on the left hand side is also radial, but it's so close that they might as well be parallel. So the gravitational field strength in that case, it's quite appropriate to say, well, that G is constant, whereas in this case, G is not constant at all. It's simply a different model, a better model for larger scale, but the other model is perfectly satisfactory at the small level. Now, what we want to do, therefore, is develop a formula for the change in gravitational energy that is actually a better model. And so we now need to draw our understanding of work. Work is simply equal to the force that is applied on an object multiplied by my displacement. And I'm going to use R from here on in, the radius or how far you're away from the object. And in this case, I'm going to be using the term of me doing work on Teddy, uh, remembering that I will be talking gravitational energy as defined by the work done by the gravitational field. But for this moment, just for the moment, I'm just going to talk about the work I do in lifting Teddy up. Then I'm using a force which is going to be equal to mg. And of course, that remains constant. And of course, the height is therefore the radius or the r value that we have here. And there's a nice formula. That's not going to work, of course, here because this mg changes. What do I mean? Again, the fact is, is if I move Teddy from here to here and I move him a kilometre, let's say close to the Earth, then the work done is very different than if I move him a kilometre whilst already much further away. So the formula here is not going to be helpful. We need to find another formula. And to help you understand how we get the formula, I'm going to introduce you to some graphical analysis. So the first thing we want to do is just throw in a graph and let's just quickly draw our axes. So what do we labels that we want our axes? Well, obviously the labels we need is force and our X axis is going to be our displacement, which we call R. If I graph Teddy being lifted up, I'm going to get a graph that looks like this. And let's say I just move him to that position here. Now, look carefully. The work done is the force multiplied by my displacement. Well, that happens to be the area underneath the graph. And so this is an important physics and mathematical concept that if I graph a work situation where I apply a force for a certain displacement, the area of the under the graph of that situation actually gives me the work done. And in our case, the work is equal to the gravitational potential energy or gravitational energy change, either increasing it or decreasing it. What about my other situation? Again, what we need to do is a graph. And so drawing axes quickly, we need our same axes F and R. But remember, our force changes as we move further and further away. If I lift Teddy really close to the Earth, I'm going to have larger forces than if I was 500 kilometers up in orbit. And so as a result, what would that graph look like? Well, remember, my force is determined by the inverse square law of Newton's gravitational law. So therefore, my graph is going to be looking something like this. I'll do my best capabilities of drawing an inverse square relationship graph. 
The rules still still stay the same. If I want to work out the energy, then all I need to know is the area underneath the graph between my two points. So for example, if I'm interested in my displacement from this value here to this value here, then this particular area that is I have will actually give me the energy change. Similarly, if I work it from this position here and from this position over here, notice it's roughly the same values in terms of differences in R, I'm going to get this area down here. So the area allows us to do that. Now you'll say, well, how do you work out an area under the curve? Well, this is where calculus comes in. And calculus is a process where you can either work out the slope of any graph, which is called differentiation, or the area under a graph, which is integration. Now, I'm not going to go into the, the details, the mathematics of integration. But the key here is that if we have a function, in this case, our function is related to our G, capital M, little m, over R squared, and we find the area with respect to changes, this was the mean under means with R, and we are interested in from let's say point A to point B, when we do the integration process, we get lo and behold, the formula for the gravitational energy. And that is U is equal to G M M over R. So you don't need to understand the process of how I got from the orange bit to the yellow bit. You just need to know that the yellow bit is really about determining the area under the graph, which is in this case, the work done. So that's our value here. But now what we need to do is look at it from the perspective of the Earth's gravitational field. This is me doing work on Teddy, lifting him up. But the definition of gravitational energy is the change in gravitational energy by the gravitational field. So let me explain that. So here's my teddy and you can see my radial field lines here. And I want to know what the work is done. Now we're interested in moving teddy from a far distance closer because the gravitational field is doing the work as teddy moves. But do you remember what I said to you right at the beginning? I said, if I'm moving away from the earth in that direction, my gravitational energy has to increase. But if I'm moving towards the earth, my gravitational energy has to decrease. Why? Because if I let Teddy drop, he gains kinetic energy and conservation of energy says that's got to come from somewhere, which is of course our loss in gravitational energy. Well, we want changes, we start the beginning and we need a definition. So a nice place like we did at the beginning, let's make a starting point equal to zero, which makes the change really easy to work with. So where can we put our zero value? Well, it makes sense to put our zero value where the gravitational field strength is basically zero. Well, where is that? Well, at infinity, so if R approaches infinity, what we can say is that the gravitational energy is going to be approaching zero. It doesn't have to be equal to zero. It's an arbitrary choice, but it makes sense to make that number because really the gravitational field strength is so weak there, then really at that point, it's zero. So now what we have is a place where we can say is our starting point because our definition becomes the gravitational energy is the work done moving an object from an infinite position to the point of, let's say, distance r. And that's what we do r. Let's make our r, let's say, this value here. It doesn't have to be here. It can be at the Earth's surface, but well, let's say we make it r. Now, how, what do we have now? Remembering, I have to increase my gravitational energy as I move towards zero, which tells me that all of this distance here, all of the values across from there right along here, gravitational energy has to be a negative value. That sort of makes sense, doesn't it? All right. If I have a gravitational energy value, let's say of negative 10 over here and negative two over here, I am increasing the gravitational energy because negative two is more positive than negative 10 and vice versa. 
and therefore mathematically my gravitational energy formula which is really about the change of gravitational energy starting from zero becomes this u is equal to negative because our final will always be negative g capital m little m over r let's quickly just also clarify this by looking how that would look from a graphical perspective so here now i have my graph and in this case put my axis in place again what we need now is our labels we're going to make u our y-axis and our r our x-axis and remember moving teddy moving away from earth or towards the earth in this case we're increasing the gravitational energy as we move away and decreasing the other way if we graph this we're going to get a graph that looks like this You'll notice a couple of things. First of all, this is an inverse relationship. Why? Because our formula is negative G M M over R. It's an inverse relationship. Secondly, it's always negative. There's no positive gravitational energy. It's always negative. Why? Again, because we've established infinity being the zero value. It doesn't have to be that way, but it makes sense for our definition. Now, how can we show that it's changing gravitational energy and increasing if we move Teddy away? Well, let's have some arbitrary values. Let's make my value, let's say, at R at this. And these are just going to be some sort of um, arbitrary units that I'm just going to call 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then I'm going to use our value. And let's say I move from here. And then I move, let's say, to here. And again, if you use our formula, you know that if I substitute this G, M, M there, it's going to be the same. So let's just call that a value of, let's say, uh, K. So my gravitational energy final is in this position here. So this by my U final is going to be K over equal to, now remember being it's a negative value, K over, in this case, 3 squared. I subtract my initial, which is going to be negative k. That k again is just this number up here. But now what we have is over 1 squared. And so what I get is negative k over 9 plus k. Now you can clearly see what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get a value of, in this case, 8k over 9. The number isn't important. What's important is the sign. It's positive. My gravitational energy has increased as I moved away and of course the reverse is true too. Well I hope that has helped you understand gravitational energy. In a subsequent video I'm going to show you how using gravitational energy we can work out the escape velocity that is what is the speed a rock or an object needs to have to escape a gravitational field and it's related to the concept of energy. Please like, share and subscribe, put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High, take care and bye for now.